And this segment that we have right here, predicting which players would have broken out or broke out in 2020, some of these players I was right, and some of these players I was wrong. So I'm going to be transparent with you guys. I pulled up this video because week one of 2020, that episode, that podcast, we dedicated it to which players would break out in 2020. So what I did, we have seven players. I'm going to go through each of these seven players, take a look back at that video, and then react to me predicting them to break out and if I was correct or not. So let's go ahead and start off with our first uh, player. Starting off with the first player that I'm personally high on as well, Van Jefferson in L.A. Oof. When you catch the attention of a head coach because of your work ethic, yeah, you're going to get some playing time for sure. Jefferson is just one injury away to Cooper Cup and Robert Woods from really taking off. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're not off to a good start. I can go ahead and tell you that because Van Jefferson uh, did not do much in uh, 2020. As a matter of fact, his stat line for 2020 was 19 receptions, 220 yards, and one touchdown. My reasoning back then was that he was getting all these rave, rave reviews and training camp that he was going to be this breakout star for the L.A. Rams. And it turned out it, it wasn't the case. I thought that he was going to be the slot receiver, the number three receiver behind Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. But it ended up being Josh Reynolds. I thought the Rams ran a lot of wide receiver, three wide receiver sets and that Van Jefferson will get his fair share of, of receptions and targets. But uh, I was wrong. I missed the money on that. So, hey, first breakout player, I admit I was wrong on that. But uh, the beauty of this is that we have six more that we want to talk about. So let me go ahead and pull up the next one and let's see if this one was correct or incorrect dan arnold tight end arizona cardinals may not have even heard of him don't know who this guy is but let me fill you in he was on the new orleans saints uh just last year until he was picked up by the arizona cardinals towards the end of the season mm -hmm. he was a wide receiver converted to a tight end the saints were also big on him because before they had Jared Cook as their tight end, they wanted Dan Arnold, who's a big guy, but also fast, like a wide receiver, to be that tight end for Drew Brees. And I'm not saying that Arnold is going to be the next 1,000-yard tight end receiver, but he is going to be playing a significant role in that Cardinals uh, offense. For you guys that play fantasy football, I mean, this isn't necessarily saying that you should pick him up because he's not going to be that relevant in fantasy football, but he's going to take, take a step up and carve out a role for him so that maybe in 2021, he could be a fantasy tight end that you guys could draft for your team. Wow. I can go ahead and say, because of that analysis right there, I think that was a success. Uh, again, he didn't be this amazing 1,000 yard receiving tight end. That was not the case with Dan Arnold and the case with me saying that he's going to be that breakout player. It was the case that, okay, he's not a well-known guy. He's now going to be a starting tight end and he's going to have a role in that Cliff Kingsbury offense, which ended up being true based off of the tail end of 2019 and how successful he was in that run. So uh, his stat line was 31 receptions, 438 yards and four touchdowns. Not the best stat line in the NFL for any tight end or any player in general. But as far as breaking out compared to uh, doing better than what people expected him to do, I would say, yeah, he, he broke out in that sense. Uh, the next one, let's go ahead and stick with the tight end train. And if you guys are fans of time to football, you know, this man very, very well. I talk about him way too often. Let's go ahead and show it. I've been big on him for the last two years, ever since he entered the NFL. And in year three, I believe this is finally going to be the season for Dolphins tight end, Mike Gesicki. This guy is athletically gifted. Do not sleep on Mike 
Gesicki. Not much to talk about with him right there because it's pretty much settles the debate that Mike Gesicki did have a breakout season in 2020. 2019, the last half of the season, was starting to come around with Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback. 2020 had his ups and downs as well. He was way more productive with Ryan Fitzpatrick. And when Tua came in, his numbers did dip a little bit, but his final stat line was 53 receptions, 703 yards, and six touchdowns in 2020. So the prediction of Mike Kosicki breaking out in 2020 was correct. Now to go on to the next player, we're going to transition to another pass catcher, and we're going to transition back to the wide receiver position. Michael Pittman on the Indianapolis Colts. The reason I love Pittman so much is because his size. He's compared to someone like Vincent Jackson uh, when he was playing with L.A. or San Diego at the time and Tampa Bay. Pittman was touted by Frank Reich, the head coach of the Colts, to be one of, if not the best, wide receiver in that draft class. It's Bold. noted that in training camp, he's been looking impressive and that he's going to have a significant role with Phillip Rivers and that Indianapolis Colts offense. So watch out for uh, Michael Pittman. So that was a bold statement by Frank Reich. They drafted him in the second round. I think it was Jonathan Taylor, then Michael Pittman, or maybe it was reversed. But either way, two second round picks were uh, Michael Pittman and Jonathan Taylor. They loved him. They really did. They loved the size. And uh, rest in peace, Fiss and Jackson, they compared him uh, a lot to, to him and the, the player he is and the type of body that he has as well. 40 receptions, 403 yards, and one touchdown. So as far as like a breakout player as one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, absolutely not. But as far as an emerging target for Phillip Rivers like we predicted, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that this wasn't incorrect, but it also wasn't correct. I'm not going to go ahead and give myself the credit, but I'm also not going to say he was a complete bust because he's still trying to get into the rhythm in 2020. So I'm going to say, eh, with Michael Pittman, as far as our prediction with him. Uh, and let's go ahead and pull up another one. The next player that we have back to the wide receiver position, continuing on with that. This one, pretty good one. Justin Jefferson on the Minnesota Vikings. And the reason I believe that he's going to be a breakout player in 2020 is because you've got to look at, you just got to use your head. You got to use your knowledge. You got to use your knowledge of the scheme that Minnesota plays. Their coaching staff going into 2020 hasn't changed that much. It's almost pretty much the same offense that they have minus Stephon Diggs. Oh, you lost your number two receiver. And comes Justin Jefferson, a guy that you drafted to be that replacement for Stephon Diggs. BC Johnson is listed as the, as the number two guy. But like we mentioned earlier with all the other players, they try to give those veterans that deference because they respect the veterans and they want to list them ahead of the rookies on the depth chart. But Justin Jefferson has been looking way more impressive in scrimmage and in OTAs, and he's going to be the next Stephon Diggs for that Minnesota Vikings offense. Hmm. 88 receptions, 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns. Was a candidate for the Rookie of the Year award was one of the best receivers in the NFL. Now, one prediction that I think I put in there or I might have left off was I said that Adam Thielen was going to be the number one, but I just, after reading that stat line, is obviously Justin Jefferson that ended up being the number one receiver on the Minnesota Vikings. So uh, in that sense, I was incorrect. But as far as the breakout candidate, when I said that Justin Jefferson was going to be a breakout candidate, I was very high on him. If you saw my fantasy football rankings back in 2020, I had him ranked a lot higher than where ESPN or NFL.com was drafting on their draft board. I believe it was like 35 or 40 spots higher than when he should have been drafted. Uh, the fact that he got 1,400 yards, I didn't expect that. I thought it was going to be more uh, 1,000, 1,100 like Stephon Diggs, but he's shown to be much better for the Minnesota Vikings than Stephon Diggs so far in his rookie season. So, Justin Jefferson, breakout player, correct. Oh, 
gosh, I'm just reading the list and the next one that we have. Uh, I, it's not too terrible, but uh, I don't think this one is a is a hit for me. It's definitely a miss. Let me go ahead and show it. Raiders wide receiver Hunter Renfro. Oof, a slot receiver. The reason being because they drafted Henry Ruggs, who's projected to be their number one receiver. Brian Edwards in the third round. Tyrell Williams is now hurt. So on the depth chart, don't be surprised if they have Ruggs number one, Brian Edwards number two, and then Renfro at number three. That just means that he's going to be working out the slot, and they're going to use him the same way that they did last season. And how they used him last season was in the last two games, he had 100-yard games back-to-back. We expect him to have 88 targets for the season, about 60 receptions or so, 757 yards receiving, and about six touchdowns. So, uh, Okay, so after hearing that stat line, I would say it's not too terrible. I predicted 750 yards, six touchdowns, 60 receptions, was it? 56 receptions, 656 yards, and only two touchdowns, which isn't too off. But if I want to go ahead and say, was that a correct prediction or was that incorrect? I'm going to say that was incorrect. I'm going to go ahead and say that he just didn't live up to the expectation that I thought that he would have in 2020. It wasn't that much bigger of an expectation or that much of a leap that I predicted him to have compared to what he actually put up. But still, I'm going to go ahead and say that was a miss. We have one more player that we predicted to break out that we 100% missed out. Let me go ahead and play the video real quick and let you guys listen in, and then I'll get back to you guys. Oh, my gosh. This is awkward. You're going to roll your eyes at this name, but Le'Veon Bell. Why not? Okay, let's talk about the negatives of Le'Veon Bell. Let's say why people don't like him. 3.2 yards a carry Bad. last season. Okay, yeah, that's not good. Jets offensive line was poor. Mm -hmm. That whole offense in general was not that good. Nope. And plus, Adam Gase is the head coach and was not a fan, according to multiple reports, of the signing of Le'Veon Bell. Sources are saying that Adam Gase is going to use Frank Gore and use LaMichael P. Ryan to split carries with Le'Veon Bell. Maybe that's true, but honestly, it is. Adam Gase has said himself that he did not use Le'Veon Bell the way that he wanted to use Le'Veon Bell, which means that he could see an influx of work. Nope. Listen, I'm not saying he's going to run for 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns, like I said. But 1,000 yards rushing? Yeah, it's believable. 60 to 70 receptions, as he had 66 receptions last season. It's doable. Five, six, seven touchdowns total? Yeah, that's believable. Hey, guess what? For you guys that are fantasy football fans, those numbers that I just said, those are solid running back two numbers. Oh, my gosh. He's not going to be a breakout as far as the best running back in the NFL, but he's going to be pretty freaking good for the New York Jets. So Le'Veon Bell is a guy that I believe is going to have a good season in 2020. All right, now we're done. Okay, now I can cut back to me. Because I, I just wanted to get off the screen because it was just so embarrassing. Oh, my gosh. Hassan, what the heck? <laughs> Le'Veon Bell, as a breakout player, I had no idea what I was talking about in that case. Apparently, I, I just had so much hopes for him. And I thought, okay, well, people weren't giving him that much love. I'm not saying that he was going to be a running back one, first-round pick, nothing like that. But at least give him credit where credit is due. He's the RB1 for the New York Jets. What could go wrong? I thought they drafted Mekhi Becton, and things were going to get better. Supposedly not. 82 carries, 328 yards, two touchdowns. The 70 receptions that I predicted, way off. 16 receptions, 138 yards receiving. So, that on my end, I am so sorry, ladies and gentlemen, if I steered you wrong. I told you guys to draft Le'Veon Bell fourth round, and if he falls any pa anywhere past the fourth round, you got to grab him immediately. I was wrong. I was completely wrong. And I apologize for that, admitting my mistakes. So let's just recap with these breakout players. Which players 
did I predict correctly? Which players were incorrect? So the players that I predicted, uh, let's start with the bad news first. Incorrectly was Van Jefferson, Hunter Renfro, and Le'Veon Bell. The players that I predicted correctly were Dan Arnold, Mike Gesicki, and Justin Jefferson. And then Michael Pittman was kind of in the middle. Could be incorrect, could also be correct, whichever way you want to look at it. But that's me reacting to the players that I thought would break out in 2020. Some did, some didn't. But leave your thoughts and your comments and your opinions down below. If you have a player already right now, it's kind of early, but if you feel like there's a player that could break out in 2021, let us know in the comments. We would love to, to hear that, hear your opinions, and interact with the guys and give our, our thoughts as well.